In order to use walls to improve the solve function, you first need to understand how they're implemented in the maze class. In order to understand that, you need to realize that when you're looking at a visual representation of the maze, you're not looking at one array, but three. The array that you're aware of is the values array, which allows us to put a value inside a cell and that value can be a, a numerical value which ranges from 0 to 255 because the array is declared as a byte data type. The other two arrays that uh, you're looking at here are for the walls. There is a, an array for the horizontal walls, the walls going this way and then down here as well and actually within the maze but you don't see any printed here yet. And then there is an array for the vertical walls, the walls going up and down right here. These walls are not represented by a byte data type, they're represented by a boolean, a true false. Either the wall exists or it does not exist. And the way they are addressed is as follows. The upper left horizontal wall is wall 0, 0, 0th row, 0th column. And then we have 0, 1, 0, 2, 0, 3, 0, 4, and 0, 5. Then we have the walls going down this way. So the horizontal wall here is 1, 0, 1, or 2, 0, 3, 0, and 4, 0. It's important to note that the number of walls in the horizontal walls array is actually one more than the number of rows in the maze. Whereas the number of columns in the horizontal walls array is the same as the number of columns in the maze. Now let's switch over to the vertical walls. This vertical wall is wall 0, 0. The next one is row 0 column 1, row 0, column 2, row 0, column 3, row 0, column 4, row 0, column 5, and row 0, column 6. Counting down we have row 1, column 0, row 2, column 0, and row 3, column 0. The vertical walls array is just the opposite of the horizontal rows array, or horizontal walls array, in that the vertical walls has the same number of rows, but one additional column. Now that we know how to address the walls within the uh, visual representation of our maze, let's go ahead and add some walls. I would like to add one horizontal wall right here and one vertical wall right here. To add walls to our uh, maze, I'm going to create a new function right below our solve function called add virtual walls. These aren't real walls, they're just pretend walls that only show up in our visual representation for the purposes of debugging our algorithm. And then if I scroll up, I can see the variables 
that house or the arrays that house these um, walls. So here there's the vertical walls array and the horizontal walls array. Notice that the vertical walls array has the same number of rows as the maze, but a one is added to the number of the columns. And the horizontal walls array has a one added to the number of rows, but has the same number of columns. Before we go back to adding walls, we'll take a quick pause here and look at this nano mouse maze function. This function is called automatically when the maze is created. To create such a function, all you have to do is give it the same name as the class. It's called a constructor. I'm using it here along with a series of loops within loops to initialize the boundary walls of the maze so that when we print it for the first time it's easier to see exactly what's going on. To add walls within the maze I am going to say horizontal walls and then I forgot to look and see what the position of that wall is. So let's take a quick peek back and figure out where this wall is located. So if I look I see that it's in row 2, column 0, column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4. So row 2, column 4. This wall is in row 2 as well. Column 1, column 2, column 3, column 4. So it's actually using the same coordinates. Just for kicks, let's go ahead and add one more wall here, right here, just for practice, really. And let's find its coordinates. It's going to be uh, row 1 and column 3. We'll go back to our program. So we need to add a horizontal wall at row 2 column 4, and we're going to set this equal to true. That means that there is a wall there. Then I need a vertical wall at 2, 4. And one more vertical wall at 1, Three. Once we've added the walls, we need to add one line of code to the main part of our program within the setup right here. We need to call the add virtual walls function. Once this is done, go ahead and plug in your Arduino, upload the program to it, and run it to make sure that the walls were added as specified uh, as we want. So you can see the horizontal wall here added above the target cell, the vertical wall to the left, and this other vertical wall that we added just for the sake of practice. Don't worry about the numbers within the maze at this point. They're not going to be impacted yet until we adjust our solve function a little bit. To make sure you have a solid handle on how walls work within the maze class, practice adding walls. Uh, draw a maze first and then try and add the walls through the add virtual walls function so that when you print it, it looks like what you have drawn.